Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial for Gradio. If you haven't used Gradio before, Gradio is an open source Python library that lets you easily create web-based GUIs from your machine learning models. And you can use these GUIs to easily debug your model, demo your model, or even deploy it so that other people can use your model. So how do you use Gradio? Let's, let's jump into it. So first of all, installing Gradio. Gradio is a Python package, so you can install it just by running pip install Gradio. You can do it in this way inside a Jupyter notebook or inside a Colab notebook, or you can just write in pip install Gradio inside terminal. Once you have it installed, um, then you can start using it just as you would a typical Python library. You go ahead and import Gradio, so we've written that here, and then you, uh, you set up this Gradio interface class. Now, this is kind of the key component of the Gradio library. So let's talk about this. So Gradio wraps Python functions inside UI components. And so there are three basic ingredients. First, you need to have a function that you want to wrap. So in this case, we have this function called replace. It takes in a string and then it replaces the, wor the word world with the word internet. The next ingredient for the Gradio library is some sort of input UI component. In this case, we have chosen text box, but you actually have a lot of different options depending on what's suitable for your function. So you can say, I wanna actually take in an image or a microphone for an audio recording. There's a lot of different options which you can check on the Gradio app website. Um, inside the docs, you'll see a list of input components and output components that I'll talk about. Um, so the second ingredient is what input component you want. And the third ingredient is simply what output component you want. And with this case, I've chosen text box for both of them. Once you define this interface object, then you go ahead and call the launch method. And when you do that, what ends up happening is that the Gradio library will create a little web application that contains, that includes a GUI that wraps around your interface. So let's take a look here. So here I can go ahead and see that the, U, the GUI has been rendered and I can type in hello world and I can click submit here. And you can see here, the output is the output of my function. So in this case, this is a, a pretty simple example, of course, but it, it includes the three core ingredients that you use for Gradio. The function that you care about wrapping, the input component, and the output component. Notice for the input and output component, we've used string shortcuts, just text box and text box. These are shortcuts for the full instantiation of a class, which would normally be something like gradio.inputs.textbox, and here gradio.outputs.textbox. We'll see why sometimes it can be useful to actually instantiate the class in the next example. So let's do a more realistic example. Suppose you have here um, the M an MNIST model. So you've trained an MNIST model and I have some code here that simply loads the MNIST model into TensorFlow. And then I have this function here called recognize digit. So now, now this is my new function that I wanna wrap inside of a Gradio GUI. In this case, I have my function as recognized digit. For my input, I've used sketchpad. For my output, I've actually instantiated a class. And in this case, it's the label class. And I've as specified, I just wanna see the top three labels. I don't wanna see all 10 output classes. I just wanna see the top three. If you do that, you'll, you'll see that, you know, Gradio creates this little GUI for you. It, it, it's running on a port, so I can actually open this up. And I can, I can start using my model. So I can you know, draw digits here and I can see the prediction. Uh, I can kind of you know, check and make sure the model is working like I expect. And you might end up finding interesting failure points of the model. So in this case, for example, it seems to be doing pretty well, but what if I draw a one here over the, on the edge? Now it actually thinks it's a four. So although this is actually a convolutional neural network, it, it turns out that this is not very spatially invariant as I can see by drawing different digits in different places. So one of, the, one of the ways Gradio can be useful is to help debug your model and find these different failure points before your model goes into production. Uh, so uh, Gradio also includes a lot of other parameters that can be useful depending on the kind of GUI that you wanna make. So here I've created, uh, you know, uh, I've created another interface. In this case, it's very similar to the one that I'd created before. It's the same function, the same input component and the same output, output component. The only difference here is that I've added the parameter live equals true. When I do this, I end up having an interface that's actually running in real time. And so as I'm drawing in my sketchpad, 
I can actually see the predictions changing. And so I can see the moment it goes from a three to an eight, for example. And then I can decide, you know, is this behavior reasonable? Is this what I want? And so we can enable this just by setting this live flag to be true. Let's go on to another example. So in this case, I have another TensorFlow model. In this case, it's InceptionNet. So I've loaded up InceptionNet here. Um, I've gone ahead and just downloaded human readable labels for ImageNet. Uh, but the key thing here is this function, classify image, which, which takes in an, an input image, uh, pre-processes it, and then passes it through my model for prediction. And then I return a dictionary of predicted labels. In this case, I, I have, again, um, an input function, classify image. Now my input UI is this image UI. Uh, in this case, I go ahead and I pre-process the image to be 299 by 299. And then again, for the output label, I say I want uh, three input classes. And so what this does is this renders this little GUI for me here. And then I can go ahead and actually I can type in um, or rather drop in different images and see how the, the prediction of my model. You can see it's, you know, it, it does reasonably well. I can also go ahead and, and see and perturb this image to see how robust my model is. So I can take this image and for example, see if this is gonna be a robust to rotation, which I expect to be, uh, but it's actually not. It now thinks it's a platypus, interestingly. Um, so that's, you know, that's a, a failure point of my model that, uh, that I might want to, you know, I might wanna fix via data augmentation or some other technique. Another cool uh, thing that you can do with Gradio is easily share your model with anybody else. So I've gone ahead and pretty much done the same exact thing as before, same function, same input component, same label um, uh, output component. But the only difference is I've added share equals true as a parameter into the launch method. And what this does is this creates a live link that anyone can use to actually interact with my model. So I can actually send this link to my collaborator, my friend, uh, my parent, <laughs> my advisor, whoever I want. And they can open up this model now in their own browsers. And what's happening then is that they can, they can you know, un upload um, whatever image they want. And what's gonna happen is when they do that, Gradio will take care of the message passing. So it'll take in this image and it'll pass it through into the model which continues to run locally on your computer. Um, and, and Gradio handles the message passing so they can put in their own images and they can see the predictions. This is really useful if you wanna deploy a model really quickly just as a prototype and get feedback. Uh, the person on the other end doesn't need to be a machine learning developer. They don't need any sort of technical expertise. They can literally drag and drop images um, and they don't need any sort of software dependencies or hardware dependencies since the model continues to run locally or on whatever server you're running Gradio in the model. Another useful thing there is they can also, if they notice mistakes, they can actually flag errors. So let's go back to the example that we saw before um, where you have this, uh, we pass in lion and I click submit, I see the prediction and I perturb this image. And now the model is, is making nonsensical predictions. So what I can do is I can click flag here. And what flag does is it sends this data point, zaps it back to the machine learning model developer's laptop and what you'll see is that this actually creates this uh, directory called flag uh, with the data point that I've just included. Um, so it actually sends this data point back to this original machine that's running Gradio, that's running this model. And I have a, it also includes a log about when the, when the person sent the data point, what the model predicted, and so this allows you to get feedback on how your model is performing, closing the loop between the machine learning developers and the end users. Finally, one other cool feature of Gradio is free interpretation out of the box. Okay, so what do I mean here? So oftentimes you wanna understand why a model made a particular prediction, not just what the prediction was. And so I can go ahead and, 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 and uh, get this very easily by setting interpretation equals default uh, as this for using this flag. And so what this does is this allows me to hit this interpretation button. And what Gradio will do is use a model agnostic method to figure out what parts of the image are most responsible for the prediction. Now this method is a very general method. Um, you can also define your own interpretation methods and pass them in as functions here instead of this 
a string shortcut default. Yeah, I'll leave that for another time. Now I've shown sharing and, and flagging and it's worth reiterating that the model that you're working with continues to run locally, right? So it's running on the host computer. The remote users, they can access your model through these GUIs. All they need is a browser that they can, and, and a link. And it's just like as easy as sharing a Google doc or anything like that. They can op open it up on their laptops or on their phones and start playing with your model. Um, for the sake of time, I won't go through all of these examples, but I will include a link to this notebook that you can run. Um, but I'll just mention a few key kind of highlights here. With Gradio, you can also go ahead and um, create uh, GUIs that are more complex, uh, mixing and matching different UI components. And to see a good, a good examples of these, you can just go on our website where we have machine learning examples. Um, and you can see, for example, um, this UI component here, which takes in two text boxes, a context and a question, and, and as the output contains one text box. This is as easy as just simply passing in a list of, inter a list of input interfaces. Um, and you can also have a list of output interfaces. For your function, you simply can accept multiple input parameters and those get mapped to the input UI component. And likewise, you can also return multiple output components. Um, and those get ma mapped to multiple, uh, you can pass in multi uh, return multiple values rather, that which get mapped to multiple output components. And you can build more complicated interfaces using um, sliders and radio boxes. You can see a lot more examples of this on our website. The final uh, UI related thing that I'll highlight is that you can also use Gradio to compare models. And so this example here, I highly recommend you guys to check out uh, multiple image classifiers comparing inception to mobile net on our website. And this has a good example of a lot of different things that you can do with Gradio, including adding metadata and titles and descriptions to your GUIs to make it easier for your users to understand what's happening. You can also add examples that let them immediately just click on them and, and try out the model really fast. One last thing I'd like to, to demonstrate is the ability to actually uh, do embeddings and bulk inference. And so this is best demonstrated with an example, but what I'll, what I'll show for now um, is, is the ability to actually uh, run this bulk inference. So let's go ahead and, and uh, do that. And so what I have here is I have a bunch of examples that I've loaded up into my model. And so I can click on them and I can run inference one example at a time, or I can just click run all. And this is a very handy thing that basically just runs predictions on all of my images altogether. And you can see all of the outputs here, the classes along with the confidences. But what I wanna show in this final example is this really useful thing called embeddings. And um, if you click on view embeddings, what, what Gradio is doing is it's taking the data points that you have and simply plotting them in this 2D embedding space. And so this is pretty cool because now I can see all of my examples and I can see, okay, what's happening here? Oh, these are the zeros are all clustered here. I says, so I can have an understanding of how my model sees the world or how it sees the different samples. I can see, okay, here, okay, I have different threes. What is this here? This is, this is a two, this is a two. And I can also do things like I can understand how perturbations to my input data points affect the embeddings. So for example, let's say I take this two and I actually turn it, uh, I actually just modify this image a little bit. So I can go ahead and, and kind of draw this and I save this and I submit this. My model thinks it's an eight. Why does it think it's an eight? Well, I can kind of see how the embeddings have changed. Now it thinks that it's similar to these data points here. Interestingly, this nine, interestingly. Um, so it's close to an eight or a nine. Uh, the eights and nines are clustered together. Um, but this allows me to understand how my different data points are related to one another. And if my model is making unusual predictions, I can see what other samples might be influ influencing its predictions. So this is very useful again for debugging your model. I'll go ahead and uh, that's pretty much the end of, end of the tutorial. 
Uh, to get a sense of what other kinds of GUIs you can create, you can check out our model hub, which includes a bunch of uh, pre-trained models along with their Gradio interfaces. Uh, and you'll see all sorts of different models. You can also use this website, Gradio.app, to deploy your models onto the Gradio hub, which allows other people to actually access your model and will host your model so that anyone can run inference with it very easily. So uh, check out the website, www.gradio.app for more information and a lot more uh, documentation and examples. Thank you very much for listening to this tutorial.